I will now call this uh, special meeting of the St. Cloud City Council uh, to order this Thursday, October the 29th, 2020. Um, with that, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mayor Blackwell? Here. Deputy Mayor Matheny? Here. Councilmember Cooper? Here. Councilmember Askew? Here. Councilmember Trace? Here. Our first item is a council action item number one. We'll ask our deputy clerk please read this item into the record. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. So item one is the is the mobility fee agreement that we talked about at the council meeting. And right. based on the action that the dependent special district just took the mobility fee agreement, credit agreement is no longer necessary. Uh, and staff is not recommending we move forward with it. So with that, we would withdraw it from the agenda and you, we can move right into item two. Thanks, sir. And could you please read item number two, Deputy Clerk? Discussion of possible action regarding the approval of the conceptual master plan, concept plan, amendment for mixed use property containing approximately 141.4 acres of vacant land known as Stephen's Plantation North. Mr. Mayor, this is Andre Anderson. May I be recognized, please? Yes, you may, Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Andre Anderson, Community Development Director. Um, this item um, was brought before you on October 22nd and um, <laughs> A motion was made to continue it after uh, a lengthy discussion about the um, north um, connector between Budinger and um, Canoe Creek. And as such, um, the applicant went, went back and revised their plan and come up with a new plan, which um, we have reviewed. Um, next slide, please. So uh, yeah, and this is also a recap of what I just said a minute ago. Um, and now that the DSD has in fact um, approved the removal of the mobility fee credit requirement, so we can in fact move forward with the proposed updated concept plan from the applicant. Next slide, please. So this um, screen um, shows you the new proposed uh, development program and it is, um, has added um, a few parcels to the mix and those include uh, parcels in neighborhood two which is the um, attached um, residential units um, townhomes and um, it also includes um, relocation of or the adjustment to the neighborhood center um, parcel um, specifically a parcel a which is part of the neighborhood center that's um, five and one acre and then parcel um, B, C, D, and H are all part of neighborhood two. And those um, have made, there have been some just, just visit those parcels. Um, also, there may have been some adjustments, slight adjustments to the open space area as well. Um, next slide, please. This plan shows the new configuration of the project and essentially it removes the four lane divided roadway along the north portion of this project and as I said um, redesign the neighborhood center to abut the property to the north and um, made what's called Furtick Drive the main boulevard through this project being the primary road that then would connect to, again, called Furtick Drive, which goes, makes a left and goes westward um, after intersecting with a roundabout, that's a proposed um, change. In addition, there is a road that runs to the east from that roundabout that would provide access to um, the property on the north, which is the city owned property for the police and park and recreation. Next slide, please. This is a more detailed view of the road hierarchy. And you'll see that Furtick Drive now has essentially three, actually four different um, 
cross-section types starting at I think 105 feet down to 94 feet then um, I think 80 feet and then ultimately 85 feet along the north portion at the roundabout. There's also a second tier of roadways, which is called, I guess, um, Avenue Street C, which is orange. And then there's also um, Street A, which is an east-west um, road that connects with um, Road A. And then there's also the yellow roads, which are essentially the um, local streets within the subdivisions. And then the red roadways are alleys that provide access to the townhome for the rare access um, at, um, townhomes. Next slide, please. This um, slide shows, again, the revised multi-use trail. And you'll see on this slide that they have uh, provided connection to the eight foot trail and bike um, 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 service, which is along Canoe Creek Road. And then it continues into the project along what is called Furtick Drive. In addition, they indicate also that the full length of Furtick Drive will have five foot bike lanes in the road. And then on the um, west side, there is also an existing um, um, existing effort trail that is also provided to connect to the internal trail system. All the roads, as you see, that are in purple have a five foot sidewalk on both sides of the roadway. And so this in fact meets our um, requirement for walkability and connectivity throughout the community. Next slide, please. This slide shows the phasing plan. And I don't think this has really changed from what you saw previously, except for the underlying road network and uses that are there. So as you see on the southeast portion of this project in blue, and also on the northwest, that's phase one. So the, the bottom portion will be developed first along with that roadway to meet um, and essentially address our request to deal with the school board's request for a turn lane into their school. And then the subsequent phases in purple and orange uh, is phase two and phase three. And then phase four, five, and six as shown there in red and brown. And then phase seven is the portion that's along Budinger, which is uh, the additional um, neighborhood commercial land use. Next slide, please. This um, concept plan, revised concept plan is still consistent with our strategic plan goal for economic development and growth management. And the ASEAN staff um, recommends approval of the Stevens Plantation North conceptual master plan. And we also ask that you approve this proposed revised concept plan. The applicant, is, of course, is here to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Would the applicant like to speak uh, to this uh, proposal at this time? Hello, this is Eric Marks again with uh, AVEX Homes, 28 East Washington Street, Orlando, Florida. Uh, the uh, whole hype team here with us today. Uh, everybody's been working hard to try to get a, a quick uh, revision done to this plan. I do think as we had discussed at the last meeting that this has worked out, I think, well for both of us. I think Burdick um, is going to be a nice east-west connection uh, that will uh, provide bike lanes and connectivity for the city. And it also freed up a little bit more land uh, for us to try to, um, to make the purchase price work a little bit better. I'm going to turn it over to Christy, who's going to uh, run through the changes and, and give you a further update. Thanks, Eric. This is Christy Barrera with Height Design, 1130 Celebration Boulevard, Celebration, Florida. Um, thank you, Andre. I think you did a great job um, of kind of going over the changes. Um, as you can see, most of the sites stayed relatively similar. Obviously, the big change was the elimination of the Stevens Plantation Connector Road. 
Um, in addition to that, we did hear your comment from last week. We have removed the smallest single family lot we were proposing, the 32 foot lot with a single car garage. So our um, smallest single family detached lot will be a 40 foot lot with two car garages. Um, we've also removed the dead end alleys that were previously on the west side of Furtick. You'll see a loop alley system over there now. Um, and then just to reiterate what uh, Eric just said, uh, we really feel that Fur Furtick will be a great connector between Canoe Creek and Buttinger and have tried to incorporate all of the aspects of multimodal transportation in that road. Uh, we think that parents and kids will use it to get to the elementary school as well as other people to get to the commercial and other uses in the area. So, you know, have sidewalks, park, um, I'm sorry, um, parallel parking, uh, bike lanes, and obviously um, plenty of space for the cars as well. So those were our main updates to the concept plan. And then of course, we're here to answer any questions that you have this evening. One last thing to add as well. So as part of this agreement, we had initially the uh, mobility fee agreement and in conversations with staff, we had added provision to that because I'd heard, uh, I think directly from this council as well as elsewhere that um, a CDD, if it's going to be used that you guys wanted to have notice of that as early as possible. So I wanna take the opportunity we pulled because we've gotten rid of the mobility fee agreement um, it's not disclosed essentially in writing in that mobility fee agreement anymore. But I do want to make sure I take the opportunity to let everybody know that it's our goal to fund the, um, some of this common infrastructure. I think Furtick is still going to be a pretty expensive road to build and some of this connection through a CDD. Obviously, that will come back before you. It's a separate item. It's not for consideration today. But I did want to uh, make sure that everybody understood that that was something that we were uh exploring uh, that will be addressed in later hearings and that you'll have, that will take a couple hearings specifically to be considered and approved by you. Right. Anything else you have for us, Eric? No, I don't think so. Thank you. Again, we got this agreement, this plan to you guys late today. Andre and his team got us comments back in record time, um, which I think has been the spirit of this whole process. And thanks again to the height team who's who's worked awfully hard as well. So hopefully this is a, a next step in a great partnership to get this project built. Certainly want to thank you for all the hard work that uh, you and your staff have done putting this together. Uh, Madam Clerk, is there anyone in the chamber or online in the public to speak to this item? Mayor, I have one citizen in the audience, Dwayne Norman, that would like to speak regarding this item. Thank you. Mr. Norman, you have three minutes. Good evening. Hold up. Could you please state your name and address for the record? Good morning, 35 report. Um, most of what I wanted to speak about tonight had to do with uh, number one more than number two, but it's the whole whole package, I guess. And thank you for your what you did with the DSD earlier. So I'll skip a little bit of that. Um, I did want to mention last week a couple of council members mentioned maybe mobility fees could come back in to uh, help with widening work maybe if they wanted that. Um, so I'll just pick up here. The city does not need to give mobility fee credits to upgrade verdict from two lanes to four lanes. Uh, many other large communities in the area um, only have two lane roads to the development. New Creek Lakes, Canoe Creek Woods, and Indian Lakes, just to name a few. These mobility fees need to be used to mitigate the effect of the development on existing community roads like Canoe Creek Road, which this development will directly impact. Uh, Canoe Creek Road is a county road, as all major roads in St. Cloud are, other than 192. Canoe Creek Road is planned to be widened in many years in the future. The county has planned to do the PD and the E study in 2023, putting construction in many years in the future. That estimate is $60 million. If the city of St. Cloud was willing to partner with the county, this could and probably would have moved up the timeline considerably. The city now has almost $17 million on hand in the mobility fee fund. Also, with the current approved or near approval development for this one, Avex Home, Sky Lake, 
the Nar Home on Multi Road, and Southern Conference Expansion, the city will have around another $10 million estimated in the uh, mobility fund. This council is to take the bold move to partner with the county uh, with these mobility fees to move the widening of Canoe Creek Road up the list of county roads to be widened. I also challenge the council to make a policy or a promise to never give mobility fees to developers, never. With our climate, our population, our taxes, our property costs, et cetera, we do not need to give developers these fees. Between zoning, master plan approvals, the council has many tools to get the roads they need. We do not need to give up our mobility fees. We desperately need elsewhere. At election time, this could be a very big statement by everyone. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you for your time and please do what's right for our citizens. Thank you, Mr. Norman. Madam Thank Clerk, you, is there you. anyone else in the chamber online? Mayor, I have no one else on in the chamber or online. Thank you very much. Then we'll open it up for discussion and or motion by council. Would any of the council members have questions you'd like to ask? If not, council member ask you. Yeah, uh, still just kind of um, what, what is our agreement with the, the school system regarding the road and is it just a turn lane off of Buttinger? Dan, would you like me to answer that? Yes, please. Okay. Um, yes, uh, Andre Anderson, Community Development Director. It's my understanding that um, the existing agreement with the school district is for the purpose of providing a turn lane. We had a renewed uh, lease agreement with the school district that's in effect right now, and that is the only outstanding item. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Councilor Rescue. Councilor Matheny. Thank you. I've got a little list here. <laughs> um, first, I want to thank the applicant for um, hearing our concerns in the last meeting. And I know it was a monumental effort to um, get all that done. So I appreciate um, the effort on that. I guess I have a, I have a lot of comments here. Um, I mean, one of them really is like, it would be nice if we had a comparative table between what they're proposing now versus what they had before. I mean, seeing how we didn't really get this um, until today late, um, you know, I'm just wondering like what changed? I know you said additional tracks were created, but you know, at what are the number of lots that are proposed and what are, you know, what are the characteristics of the development compared to what was, was in it before? And I don't know if that information is available. Um, I would like, and I don't know if this is the appropriate time, but I always feel like we do all these like little baby approvals, right? Where it's always like, we're told that there's gonna be more information forthcoming. But then I always feel like it's hard to like move that mountain once once it's started, you know? Like, you know, we say, okay, we'll wait. Okay, we'll wait. And then it seems like we it's, it's like impossible to get the changes like at the time we see some detail because they say they're too far along. But I know I've mentioned this in an earlier meeting. Um, we were talking about, is it Twin Lakes, the 50 over 55 community and the berm and the landscaping that they have along the right of way. And that really, to me, just softens the development coming in, you know, like if you're driving down the road and you're looking at a nice landscaped berm and also improves the community from the inside. So I would like to see a landscaped berm along Canoe Creek Road. Um, I don't know if it's the time to say it, but I'm just going to say it now. Um, I appreciate you adding the rear load to these small lots um, because that was just going to be a nightmare. Um, and you said that you changed the smallest lot from 32 to 40. What's the biggest lot? That's one of my questions. Like, do we have any estate lots in here or is it all tiny little compact um, lots? Like, you know, Stevens Plantation is a nice development. It's one of the nicest ones we have in the city. And, you know, one of the things about Stevens is there's, a, there's you know, larger size lots. So that's one of my questions is, you know, what are, what's the largest lot? Um, are we planning on four and a half parking spaces for a unit? Um, I did bring this up a couple of weeks ago when I had my conversation with a developer 
I've been in a lot of neighborhoods lately that have the small lots. And one thing that I think would make the community look nicer is if there was the community mode, because when you have such tiny lots and the houses are so close to each other, like this guy mowing on Tuesday, that guy mowing on Saturday, this guy mowing on Wednesday, I mean, it really makes the neighborhood not look as nice because I guess the lots are so small. So I, you know, I had mentioned that before, like could the community, like the neighborhood I live in, it's a small community, but you know, the community mows. So we all get mowed on the same day. And I think it just makes, you know, the community look nicer. Um, Mr. Norman had some good points about Canoe Creek Road. And um, I did talk to Transportation and Transit and they told me that they're putting together a 4P application for Canoe Creek Road. It hasn't been submitted yet. His timeline that Mr. Norman said was correct. It's they're saying 2023 for the PD&E. And I think the cost for the PD&E was around $2 million. So um, I think it's a great idea if we could go talk to Osceola County, have the city manager go talk to Osceola County and say, what happens if we front the money for the PD&E you know, as a partnership to try to like move this forward because the PD&E takes a couple of years on itself and it's not funded. Like they don't even have the money to do the PD&E. So 2023 is just, you know, I guess at this point. So, you know, maybe there's an opportunity that we could go um, and, and say, hey, we'll pay for the PD&E. And once you have the PD&E done, that opens up funding mechanisms for the county. They could pursue different grant applications um, with that once it's in place. And so I know, you know, that's important to get that done. The other thought I had was we need to like coordinate with the county on along Canoe Creek Road to make sure that we're reserving whatever right of way inside of this development that would be needed for the widening of Canoe Creek Road. So let's not like shoot ourselves in the foot and, and uh, you know, build houses. And then when they come to widen, it's like we can't widen because there's no right of way available. So those those are just my thoughts. Are you wanting some response to your thoughts? Yes, please. Mr. Eric? Uh, are we off of, are we, can you hear us? I can hear you, sir. Okay, sorry about that. I'm gonna turn it largely over to uh, Christy. I think she's uh, may need to share a screen that may help. Um, so, and then maybe I'll follow up at the end Sure, yeah. Um, if you would like me to share my screen, I can put up the version you guys saw last week and the version that we submitted today. If there's specific graphics that you would like to visually see next to each other um, after the meeting, if you would like us to do a comparative table, we're happy to do that also. But if there's something specific, I'm happy to go over that now. And I, the sum of the changes were a slight change in open space and about 30 more townhome units. Right. Plus or minus. We, we can show you the precise details, but that's that's really what ended up changing from a total unit count. So is there a way to give me screen sharing access? Yeah, Kathy, can you give, give them screen sharing privileges? <sighs> Good evening. This is Kathy. Um, I'm going to do it under the name Pat Gassaway, correct? Thank you. Perfect. Yes. Okay. When I promote you to panelist, it will refresh your screen. So hang on for just a second. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, the screen is up. Uh, 
Is your microphone unmuted? I believe she came in muted, so she's going to need to unmute. Okay. Okay, can you all hear me now? We can hear you now, thank you. And so I believe what you're looking at is the uh, updated concept plan that we submitted today. So if you can see this, um, Stevens Plantation Connector is no longer shown. A portion of a east-west road is shown with some additional townhomes in this location. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and toggle over to, let's see if I can do a new share. And I'm going to go to the one that we showed you last week. And so here again, you'll see, you'll actually see this Stevens Plantation Connector is a hundred foot right of way. And where we're showing townhomes this evening, there was some open space shown. Um, the other change was the alley loaded townhomes on the east side of Furtick. There's now a looped alley that goes between the townhomes and this pond over here. Um, and then it appears that because we are eliminating the segment of Stevens Plantation Connector that is adjacent to Canoe Creek, the um, neighborhood commercial was moved north. So it abuts the land that's currently owned by the city. And so we were able to um, get one more row of townhomes along East West Road A with an alley behind those. So those were the main changes this evening. Again, I'll toggle back to the other um, one that we're looking to get approved this evening. So again, we have a row of townhomes here, townhomes here, uh, this alley was modified. And then of course, this segment of Stevens Plantation Connector was removed. And the segment that goes farther west to Budinger um, is a narrow roadway, a narrower roadway section. Um, I, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Um, Christy. Christy. Um, so when I look at this layout, the thing that concerns me is the connection to the future safety complex. So if we have, um, and I don't know how the safety complex is gonna turn out at the end of the day, but if we have police and fire there and they need to come out and use, I can't read on my screen, it's very tiny, but you've got the hunt, the big right of way, uh, 83 foot right away and then you drop to a 58 foot right away. So if you've got um, big vehicles coming out in a hurry and need to fly down this road, I don't really think that that layout is great. If you get cars, you know how we get cars parking on both sides of the road and then you've got a roundabout. So, I mean, I think some thought needs to be put into emergency vehicles because that's the whole intent of tying up into this safety complex is that they could come out and go to the west um, through here. So I don't know that a roundabout and um, like a tight right of way is a great idea. Um, I'll leave it to, um, you know, Chief Gauntlet and the um, fire chief to look at that. But I know that that's a concern as far as like emergency access and rapid response. So based on our discussions that we had last week, um, we believed that the Stevens connector could go away because um, you, all, you guys didn't want to pay us the mobility fees, and we really feel like Furtick Road is going to be the main connector road through the community. And that's why, as we mentioned earlier, you know, it really is that multimodal road that connects people from Canoe Creek to Budinger, has access to the school site. So our thought really wasn't a major connector road to this other offsite property owned by the city. So really our thought was because Stevens Connector is going away, we were replacing that with an internal neighborhood road, which is what's shown here. I still think it's providing access to this emergency uh, complex. And you know, that's if if it if it functions like every other neighborhood that seems to function anymore and you get cars parking all over the streets and you know, and then a roundabout, I'm just I'm concerned about about that as far as like um, 
access for the emergency services. I don't know how the other council members feel, but what's your um, largest lot width? So in our proposal, um, we are proposing a minimum lot width of 40. So you could have anything larger than that. Um, right now we're planning on two single family detached product types. One would be a 40 foot width and one would be a 50 foot width. But those plans could change down the road um, at the developer's discretion because we didn't put a maximum width in there. So there's no range, we just have a minimum. But, but I'd add to that that the whole concept of the mixed use, uh, future land use and zoning here is really the opposite of big estate lots. The, in fact, there is a minimum density here that we I can't that that we've struggled a little bit to meet with our lot sizes. So if we started adding 60, 70 foot lots, I don't think we could comply, or I think it would be a real challenge to comply with the minimum densities that the city is seeking in this um, zoning category. I think the other thing to add is that I zoomed out on the graphic a little bit to show the parcels that are surrounding this development. You can see there really is a good mix of product types. Um, you know, this product to the east is a new development that I'm not sure if construction is complete or not. But if you go just south of Furtick, you know, these are the larger lots that I believe you're talking about. So I think that um, the 40s and 50s and the townhomes that are alley loaded and front loaded will add to the mix in this overall area. Um, so I think it's helpful to look outside of this development and not just inside the boundaries that are colored in this evening. So are you meeting the four and a half parking spaces per unit? We will be now since we um, eliminated the single car garages. Um, we've also provided enough on street parking to meet that requirement. And then what about um, a berm with landscaping along Canoe Creek? I think that's going to be something we have to look at uh, when we get to the next step at the PSP. I, I will be honest, I'm not, I haven't found that berms if you have the space to allocate to a berm, it can be a beautiful separation. Um, but they're just frankly, financially very challenging to do. And um, I think here walls with appropriate landscaping and meeting your codes requirement for buffering from the streets is, is the direction we would head. And um... I mean, I'll, I'll let my other council members chime in on this. I'm just, I'm just one person, but I, for me personally, I feel like it makes it look a lot more upscale when you have a berm with landscaping versus a wall. I mean, the walls just tend to look bad and in, in short order. Um, I don't and then just, just to keep in mind, um, I'm telling this to staff as well, is just to keep in mind because you can see this um, layout goes all the way up to, you know, Canoe Creek Road, like we need to keep in mind future widening um, of Canoe Creek Road and any right of way that's needed. So yeah, we're showing a little bit of landscaping, a landscape buffer between Canoe Creek and the back of these lots. Um, but again, this is a concept plan, not an engineered plan. We don't have a survey boundary at this point. So we will need to get more detail. And also, like you mentioned, do we need to provide additional right away for Canoe Creek or does the county already have all the right away they need? Um, so based on you know that additional information we'll get over time and the modulation of this site, we'll be able to get a better idea of what kind of um, buffer we'll have along Canoe Creek. Okay, and, and this last question is maybe more for the city manager. Um, or Andre. So when we did this deal and we took out the um, the police and fire uh, emergency services complex, so we also took out that tract that was purchased behind the Stevens property. So what's the plan for that? Because I think at this point, if we don't have a conversation about that tract, it's going to be an unusable um, piece. 
Mr. Mayor, may, may I? Mr. Mr. Mayor, please. So we have talked to uh, the Abex Homes folks about the, you're talking about the small little five acre piece that the city owns. Yeah, yeah we've, we've talked to, to Mr. Marks about that and his group. Um, and I think it's fair to say that we kind of put those discussions a little bit on hold because we've been spending so much time trying to work on, on this part of it all. But I think that's, uh, unless some um, Mr. Marks wants to correct me, I think that's still part of the discussion to address that issue. The, the city, I think, is certainly willing to, to sell that property uh, because it, it, and whether, um, I guess, AVEX, and we'd have to talk with the city more about the, and with, about negotiating a sale of that. I think that's exactly right. I, you know, uh, I've been told several times by the height people and by uh, my colleague, Jim Reiner, we need to put our pen down. And, <laughs> and once we uh, once we started to try to incorporate that five acres and figure out what it could be used for and how do you get piping to it and what's the soil, it just, it was with our timeline, it just was impossible to try to uh, figure out at the moment. So yes, it's something once things calm down, we're going to take a, a closer look at. Um, no commitment, frankly, one way or the other, but it's absolutely still on the table. Thank you. Yeah, that's it for me. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Cooper. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, then how many total homes are you going to have now with this new changes? So this application is proposing 365 homes. 365. Okay. And commercial, did you change the commercial any larger or you made it smaller or where are we at now? No, it's basically the same. Like I said, it just got shifted up slightly to go to the northern edge of the property. Um, so as you can see, it still is cut uh, with the gas line running through it. So we'll have to work around that. But um, the acreage is basically the same. And the entitlements, the square footage is still the same that we're requesting. Okay, and the Furtick Road that you had mentioned that'll be coming down the road, you're going to want some uh, for the city to pay for a portion of that, is what you're saying? No, no, this whole, I think the city did a good job last week and made a financially uh, intelligent decision and just decided that we agree that Furtick Road is a project road, um, so we would need to pay for that. I don't think the city's going to do it, um, but we've had verbal discussions that if they want to widen Furtick to four lanes, then there would need to be a mobility fee agreement. But I really, I think everybody's going to agree that Furtick is going to function pretty well the way it's intended. So at this point, there is no city funding for any portion of Furtick Road that's on our property. Okay. Well, that was where I was coming from. I just, uh, I don't feel like we need to do that. So. Yeah, I think you guys and the gentleman, I think his name was Mr. Nelson, who raised the issue. And I know uh, Commissioner Matheny and, and really everybody, uh, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Trace, everybody uh, said, guys, this doesn't. I think everybody concluded by the end of our last meeting that, that it just didn't make sense to do it. So, right. we agree. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's my question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Do we have any other questions from council? Council member Askew. <clears throat> yeah, um, Deputy Mayor Matheny brought up a good point there. We have our safety complex up there and we don't really know what that's going to be. I do have some concerns. I don't know the width of, I mean, this is just a line drawing. Um, normally it seems like rows are 22 feet. Uh, if they were parked on both sides of the road, we might run into a little bit of a challenge. I think, can you imagine something happen at the school there or something where we need to get um, safety folks there? So can we take a look at that in uh, future concepts and see if we can make sure that that road can handle uh, the capacity of a uh, possible fire truck or a police car going down? Mr. Mayor, can I respond? Yes, sir. So the plans um, um, would go through the development review committee process subsequently. And so every agency that's involved in the DRC process would be able to weigh in to ensure that we meet those requirements for minimum road width to accommodate fire trucks and police and others. Thank um, you, Mr. I, I need to, I, I just, from, from our perspective, um, 
I don't think it's fair to go through this whole process of removing that east-west connector to then at a next step have us essentially build the east-west connector because for this purpose. So while we certainly will comply with all of your codes for our internal streets, this deal is working because of the road alignments and the road widths that you're seeing. And um, if this is really an issue, I think it needs to be resolved, frankly, tonight, um, because I really don't want to pay the bondholders $4.65 million to find out that the road widths are going to be expanded to accommodate a uh, emergency center that's at some point in the future. Mr. Mayor, just yes, Mayor. to follow up on what Andre said. So if if the and someone on the planning side or in the or the applicant correct me if I'm wrong on it, but my understanding if that piece of property wasn't there and wasn't intended to be a public safety complex, the subdivision itself would still have to be built in such a manner as approved by the public safety folks of St. Cloud to accommodate emergency vehicles going throughout the subdivision. So it, it has it has to be designed. The for example, the, the 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 roundabout has to be designed in such a way that fire trucks can get around it. And that's a requirement, and that's what will happen during the review process that Andre mentioned. So the, the, the that road will have to accommodate public safety vehicles regardless of whether there's a public safety complex near it or adjacent to it. Thank you. Mr. Yeah, I mean, I think that you could probably resolve the concerns if you just make those roads no parking, <laughs> you know, no parking. Like, so, I mean, I see your 58 foot wide road doesn't have parking on it, but just if you indicate that the, this corridor is going to be no parking, it will be enforced no parking um, because people, I don't know why, don't like to park in their own driveway or their own garage, don't know why but that just seems to be the um, status quo these days. So, you know, I, I know the road width is fine. It's just dealing with the people living in the community that, you know, block the roads. Yeah, I, I think that that's precisely what we have. I think Christy's gonna try to bring up an exhibit just so we're all on the same page as to what's there. So this is Christy Barrero again. Um, if you can see on this screen, the roads that are in yellow, the 58 foot right away, we were just showing that section. There's no parking on that section. And I can toggle back to the section, the 83 foot section. Um, this section does not have parking either. It's wider because we were showing the left turn lane into the school. So neither of these sections are proposed to have on street parking on them not on street parking that's my concern it's the people that park on the street right. yeah. <laughs> no, that's the clarification it's the people that park on the street no, yeah parking. yeah and, and i think making the yellow streets sign for no parking is easy i think it's important to remember that the orange and the green uh have parallel parking and the reason it has parallel parking is to accommodate the guest parking and the full right. four and a half spaces per residential unit that we've agreed to yeah. Could you guys hear uh, Pat Gassaway? Yes, I think so. Okay. Uh, he was saying that the streets coincide, the colors coincide with um, layouts that or cross sections that some accommodate parking, some don't. Where we're showing parking, we obviously need it to meet the four and a half aces uh, per unit. But we do believe that there's connectivity from the city's property to the north all the way through to Buttinger on roads that do not have parking planned on them. I'd also note, and I realize it's not quite as efficient, it would be a right out of the city's property, a right on to Furtick, and a very quick connection if you had to go that way to uh, Buttinger. Not perfect not the same, but I do think that there is a more, you know, heavily traveled access point that's, that's relatively close. There. With no driveways. On with, it. with no driveways, right. That's the other 
we made that change. I think uh, it may have been council member Trace who had asked us to try to get all the driveways off of Furtick. And uh, that's why we ended up with that loop uh, road behind the townhomes and pulled off uh, those lots that were going to have driveways on Furtick and uh, made and, and, and got rid of those driveways. Thank you. Councilmember Cooper. Thank you. Um, let me ask a question. The 365 homes, uh, we're going to have, all of these are going to have, uh, whether it be garages? Yes, we've agreed that all, all homes will have a minimum two car garage. And to be honest, your code almost mandates it because you have to have four and a half parking spaces per unit. And once you start doing the math and you try to do a one car garage, you end up building a massive parking field that just doesn't work. Okay, so these 40 foot, 40 foot homes that you're gonna have, you're gonna have almost garages in the front and that's about it. Uh, the garage is usually about 16 feet. The home is about 30 feet. So you end up about 16 and, and 14. It, it is, I mean, <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. Unless you're going to put them in the round back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was my problem last meeting was I really wanted to be larger lots so you get a, you know, a mesh where it looks a little bit like Ms. Matheny. I think it looks a lot bigger when you better when you've got a little little bit larger lot than a 50 or 40 foot lot. Then, you That's know, it, one, I really do believe that the goal here with this mixed use zoning is to not go to large lots. Um, and I really don't know if we put, I mean, we could put a few in, there's no doubt, but um, there's going to be some number pretty quickly, certainly a number um, below what I feel like would make the place feel differently, where we just couldn't meet the zoning requirements for minimum density. So I, I hear you. I will also say that there's just some economic realities and this land ain't cheap. Well, I understand, but the economic, what I'm looking at or what I see is you're looking for, for the number of bang for the buck that you're gonna get. And I think you're, you're, you're losing, or we are losing, the citizens are losing the size of the, of the homes that we would like to have or seen here that we've got in Stevens Plantation and it's, Lot smaller. I, I I do understand, and again, I think the zoning on this site is very different. I think it makes some sense because it's transitional to some more dense uses as you get up, you know, further north here. And while I hear you, I, I think that's what this project demands. And you're and you're not even looking into to do the berm. It doesn't seem like you're gonna you're gonna fight that. It looks like I can see. Well, I mean, the berm, the reality of a berm is how many feet do we need for a berm? 30? To do a well, 30. Right. Like if you're thinking of the Turtle Creek berm, which is a beautiful berm, right? Right. On, the, on Narcusi. Yes. Yeah, I understand. And it, it, it's, it's, you're looking for bang for the buck. That's where I'm at. And I think that's what you're trying to do on your total acreage that you've got. And I understand. I see what you're trying to do. But, uh, yeah. I, appreciate I, it. Say, I, I do think it's important to say that we really have invested in this site plan. I mean, you are, I think Furtick Drive is going to be a very nice, well landscaped entry into a great community. And while I get it, if it was 60 to 100 foot lots and million dollar houses, it'd feel different. There's no doubt about it. But I don't think the lot size so much drives. The quality of the neighborhood. There's plenty of really high-end communities, um, you know, Celebration being one, and we're not talking about that, but there's uh, even Reunion, other places where the lot size really doesn't dictate the quality of the community. Well, and if you're driving down Canoe Creek, you're going to see the back of, you know, single-family lots uh, between East West Road A and then South of Verdict. So there will be a few there. The question is, is it a berm? Is it a wall? Is it just in landscaping? If you're driving on Verdict through the community, again, you're going to see very few backs of lots 
and then you're going to see the fronts of townhomes that are alley loaded so you won't see any garages as you're driving on Ferdick. Um, you'll see some garages on East West Road A in this southern portion but again this will all be um, alley loaded townhomes so there'll be no garages here and you'll have backs of lots here so when you're driving through the community or around the outside of the community, I don't think you're going to see all of those, you know, big garages that you're thinking of. And I believe, and, and I believe once you're in the community, it, it's important to recognize that about 30% of our product mix is alley loaded. So we've eliminated the garage from the front aesthetic of all of those 30% of our, our product mix altogether. Uh, and and we've we carefully placed them such that they they create the best image that we can along the primary east west road that we're creating in Furtick. I understand, but Canoe Creek Road is going to be the one that's where you're going to see the they're going to be like almost like past the toilet paper back and forth. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, and, and the great thing about Canoe Creek is there's a lot of different residential lot sizes on it already. So we're just adding to that mix. Yeah, I feel like we need to put a berm. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Councilman Trace. Thank you. Um, so a couple questions. Um, First, I, the revised cross sections of the roads weren't sent out. I think that's why we're having uh, a number of questions about it and all the numbers are different from uh, what was sent out last week. Can you explain the difference between the Furtick Drive section, 83 feet, 86 feet, 94 sure. feet, and 105 feet? Yeah, there's a lot of sections. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Um, let me get my cheat sheet out too, so I can tell. Um, so the okay. first so you section, have the turn lanes there. Yep. So the 105 feet, hold on, you guys are, your pictures are right. So the 105 is at the entrance to Canoe Creek. Um, so that one is a little bit wider. And then, let's see, so we're showing a turn lane and that's the additional right turn lane, left turn lane, and uh, looks like a seven foot uh, median in the middle there. So then after we get to the first entrance to the neighborhoods, we transition to a 94 foot right of way, which is the one that you see below it. So we'll have two 11 foot travel lanes and then we'll have a wider median um, in this section of the project. Um, and if you can see on both of them, we have bike lanes um, on both sides of the road. Uh, the cross sections that we showed last week only had the bike lane on one side of the road. Uh, we felt that this was safer, that bikers are going in one direction on each side of the road, they're not having to cross in that five foot area. So we wanted to add that as well. Um, we're also showing the eight foot trail on the south side and the six foot sidewalk on the north side. Um, the APA trail is obviously the way that uh, people would walk to school if they chose to do that. So 105 to 94, and then we go to 86. Um, and that is when the median gets taken out of the road section and we add parallel parking on both sides of the road. And we chose to do that um, in this location because that is where we start to get closer to some of the homes that we're proposing. So the bike lanes are still there. We still have 11 foot travel lanes. We're adding parallel parking. And then of course the six foot sidewalk and the eight foot trail are still there. And then finally we get to the roundabout and we head west on Furtick and that becomes an 83 foot section. And that is when we're showing the left turn lane into the school. The parallel parking is removed. Um, so I think Deputy Mayor, that works if uh, fire trucks need to use that road. But we are still showing bike lanes and the six foot sidewalk and the eight foot trail. Okay, thank you. Um, and then, yeah, it's because the, tr the trail connectivity map didn't show 
that. Oh, I guess it does show on here six foot sidewalk and five foot bike lane. Okay, perfect. Um, and then it, it seems like there was kind of uh, uh, forgetfulness in the commercial area of what kind of pedestrian connectivity there would be either through the commercial tract or how that area would connect out to the west if someone was to um, uh, so want the to go from Buttinger over to the commercial area. So in the commercial tract, we are showing, getting all my, the order of the maps mixed up. Um, we are showing a five foot sidewalk along the gas line easement. Um, so pedestrians could use that in, in this area. And then we're also showing uh, five foot sidewalks on um, street C, which has a 72 foot right of way. So we can go to that. And everybody's going to have to squint. I have to squint. <laughs> um, so the 72 foot right of way is showing 11 foot lanes, parallel parking on each side of the road, and then um, six foot sidewalks on each side of the road. So we would have sidewalks and parking, um, as well as a sidewalk that is, again, going along the gas line easement. Okay, thank you. And can you go back to the concept plan? And there's a bit of uh, funkiness in the area between the commercial and the roundabout. Um, that green space there, there's homes on the south side of that, are, that are fronting to it and Muse, and then homes on the north side, that that's their backyard backing onto it. Uh, so I just want to make sure that that's buffered appropriately or just looks, you know, um, you know thoughtful instead of just it. You know, we've got this weird area in between um, the back of a house and the front of the house. Right. Um, yeah, we will definitely take a look at that area and make sure that the homes are fronting the proper way and that it doesn't look funky when it's built. <laughs> um, and then uh, same kind of discussion along Canoe Creek Road with the, the buffering. Um, I kind of have the same concern on the west end of Furtick where um, you guys do a good job through Furtick um, to the roundabout with having um, homes fronting on the property, alley loaded homes fronting on the property or, or um, you know, into their little neighborhood pod. And then right, right there west of it, it's, it's the back of uh, those townhomes again. So just want to make sure that's buffered properly. properly. Yeah, we're definitely showing, it's hard to see, but, you know, some green space for buffering as needed. Um, and it, it was really just trying to get the modulation to work, but that will be something that we'll definitely take a look at as we move to the next steps of the process. Okay, and then um, and this is more of a, a comment for staff. And I think um, uh, Andre seems to hear this loud and clear of, let's figure out what buffer types we like. Um, along Nolte, seems like every neighborhood that comes in has a different type of buffer along uh, Nolte. Here on Canoe Creek, there's some existing areas that have like a wooden fence as their, their buffer onto the main road. Uh, that newer section has a vinyl fence. Uh, there's some areas with concrete walls. Now there's different types of concrete walls. So just figuring out how we want to make those, uh, those buffers on those main thoroughfare roads. And then- Understood, thank you. Okay, and then um, you had discussed the minimum lot width of the NH1, um, increasing that to 40 feet. Did you have a minimum, uh, were you changing the minimum lot width of NH2 as well? We did not. The minimum lot width for NH2 currently is 18 feet. Okay, and did you guys have, uh, send in some sort of example of, of what that looks like and how that's attainable? Well, it's alley loaded. Um, okay, so that would be alley loaded. Okay, perfect. Right. I just want to make sure it wasn't a one car garage situation. No, it will be two car garages. Um, so we have the alley loaded, alley loaded townhome product and then the front loaded townhome product as well. But both of those will be two car garages. Okay. Um, I think that's all my comments. Thank you. 
Miss Mathini. Um, <clears throat> one of my other comments about the site plan is usable open space. Um, and, and I've had a conversation with on sitting in council before where I don't think we should be able to like calculate all these different little parts and pieces and consider them as part of the open space calculation because they're not really usable. So like when I'm looking at this graphic, I see like it's, it looks like an open space and rec area to the north of the wetland. That's not really usable open space. It's maybe like undevelopable land that you can't do anything. But, you know, like when you go into communities like Anthem Park, one of the nice things I think about the community is that there's like pocket little neighborhood parks like central in the community. And like if you're looking in this this plan, there's really not much when I'm looking at this as far as open space, you know, like when you're looking in the, the area south of Furtick Drive, I mean, what do they have for open space and amenities and things in the community? Um, so that's, and I don't know, cause like this, these plans kind of, you know, came to us today. Like, I don't know what the breakdown for open space is, but that's a large area north of that wetland. So I, I just don't think that should be, um, Part of the calculation because who's going to be able to use that what you know is I, I would like to see more open space and some usable open space for the community uh, so we agree with you that this is not usable we're not proposing to build a trail over the wetlands to get there this is just unusable land it just happens to be uplands instead of wetlands so we're showing it as light green, so it's not assumed that it's a wetland area. Um, on the previous plan, we were actually showing single family detached homes. Um, if you can see my arrow on the east side of Furtick, and these were proposed to be the only driveways on Furtick. We removed those roads, or I'm sorry, those homes, so there are no driveways on Furtick, and we feel that this is very central to the project and would be a great uh, community gathering space and park area. Uh, we also plan to take advantage of the gas line easement as public space um, to use that as connection for pedestrians or bikers to kind of loop through the roads and get to the park. This was another reason why we were showing parallel parking in this section of Furtick so that if you wanted to go to this area, you didn't have to walk there, that you could park your car there and enjoy this area as well. Yeah, one of the communities in town, I don't remember if it's Anthem or if it's Turtle Creek, but they even have like little, I just thought it was like a cute little gem where you're going down the street and they have these little linear parks that kind of remind you, you know, of being in like, I don't know, a cute little community. Like they would have these linear parks that would just run down in between, you know, ever so often that you could kind of cut through or you, there was park benches and trees. They were just like nice little pauses in the, in the development. But I would like to see some more um, thoughtfulness as to the open space. Yeah, I, I think too, in, in, in fairness, um, and this is a concept plan, your code's pretty specific about what those requirements are and absolutely will uh, comply with them. And I hear you loud and clear that you'd like to see open spaces that are more useful. So we're not just putting, you know, converting useless land into open space and checking the box. I just want to get it all out on the table so you're not surprised when it comes up. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm trying to do the same thing. <laughs> do we have any further discussion or questions at this point? Mayor, may I be recognized? Yes, you may, Mr. Stewart. Yes, sir. I, I just, um, I'm taking my notes here and I'd like consensus on the buffering design consistency that Mr. Trace brought up. And I, I believe the deputy mayor addressed that too. If I just get a consensus on that, we'll work on that, uh, have planning do that. Do we have a consensus on that? Can I have a thumbs up? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Do you have a consensus on that? That's good. And the other one, um, the deputy mayor had brought up for the city manager to work with the county um, and form a partnership, some kind of agreement, um, how we can partner to improve the roads, the county roads that run through the city. Yes, do we have a consensus on that? Thank you. You have right, uh, Thank you. Three, I will, I will march forward on that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
Do we have any other discussion by council on this item? Could I entertain a motion? Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve from Council Member Askew. Do I have a second? Second. A second from Council Member Trace. Madam Clerk, we call the roll. Council Member Askew. Aye. Council Member Trace. Aye. Deputy Member Matheny. Aye. Council Member Cooper. No. Mayor Blackwell. Aye. Motion carries four to one. Thank you. Mr. Benzeris or Mr. Sturgeon, do you have anything else that needs to come before us at this time? I do, Mayor. Thank you if I can be recognized. Yes, Mayor. Um, I just want to let the council know as part of the additional funding assistance to St. Cloud residents, we want to provide rental assistance in an effort to provide support for households that are at risk for homelessness through the CDBG program. This assistance was previously offered by Osceola County on behalf of the city, but now that we're an entitlement city, we're eligible to provide that service. To do this, we are required to post a public notice and allow for a public comment period of at least five days. This, this announcement tonight will serve to notify the public that the proposed amendment to our 2019-2023 consolidated plan and will be posted on the city's website for review and to accept comments from the public. The public comment period will be for 15 days from Thursday, October 29th, 2020 through Thursday, November 12th, 2020. The proposed amendment to the CDBG agreement is scheduled for adoption by resolution 2020-284R at the Thursday, November 12th, 2020 council meeting. And I'll provide this to the clerk for the record. Thank you very much. Ms. Matheny, are you wanting to speak? Mr. Cooper? No, I'm sorry. Thank you. Do we have anything else, Mr. Manzaris? No. Nope. With that, then we will consider this me, uh, no. Councilman Trace. I'm sorry. Trace. Um, uh, do we have a plan for the next meeting now that virtual meetings at the end of the month uh, will have to go away? Yes, Mr. Trace, we will resume. Um, in-person meetings, but they will be at the at the uh, 17th Street building, so we can still provide safe distancing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Rescue. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd just like to thank uh, Bill Sturgeon and whatever team they put together to have this little monthly get together Wednesday night. It was fantastic. I've never heard so many people walk into my shop and just like were uh, just wowed by the whole thing. So. Thanks to the event team, whoever did that, uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Excellent. Any other comments? If not, uh, we certainly thank AVEX for going the extra mile. Thank all of our staff for uh, all that you've done. And with that, we will now consider ourselves adjourned. Thank you Thanks. so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, everybody. If you can hear us, we appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor.